Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. This video we are covering CCNA semester 1 introduction to networks and this is chapter 4 network access. This chapter is divided in four sections 4.1 physical layer protocols, 4.2 network media, 4.3 data link protocols and 4.4 media access control. Here's section 4.1 physical layer protocols. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to identify devices connectivity options, describe the purpose and functions of the physical layer in the network. Types of connections. So we, for example, imagine that we have a home router. This home router, at the back of the home router, if you look at it, there's four ports. And that's those four ports, they emulate, they, that's your switching, right? So your router is actually performing the switching. Then we have a port where we connect internet connection. That is your where we connect the internet. Now in UK, we, this port is a bit smaller because it's RJ11. These ports are a bit larger, it's just RJ45, that you are very used to it. But this in UK is smaller, it's RJ4, RJ11, where we connect our phone lines to it. And then this router, you can see there has an em embedded wireless antenna. So it's kind of like a token the, the copper, as well as wireless. So when we have a, a home router, we connect it to the, uh, when we get our router, to configure this router or anything, we pretty much we just choose one of the switch ports here and we connect this, our PC to our or laptop to this router. Network interface cards, wired Ethernet using the Ethernet NIC. Okay, now I'm, I'm quite old. I remember the, the devices, they didn't have a network interface cards at all. So you had a computer who didn't have a NIC at all. Now these are embedded on the motherboards and you don't have to think of even laptops and all that, they have the ethernet card there. We used to, uh, for example, in our computer, if you wanted the new computer to connect to the internet or even in the network, you didn't have a net network interface card. So you had to go and purchase one and install it. Make sure the drivers are correctly installed and so on. And make sure that you actually, the stack, the TCP IP stack is, is, is configured correctly. How we would do that? You would ping. You ping ourselves. Ping 127.001. If we have a reply, we know we have a good, we have installed our configuration card correctly. These days, for example, you can have a, the wireless connection, but with the wireless, we have these, say, say uh, from my, my living room to the end of the, uh, I don't know, end of the garden, I don't reach the wireless, uh, there's no, the signal, it doesn't get there. So uh, what I can do, I can buy one of these devices that I can plug in our, in the, uh, anywhere around the house and it's going to give me the wireless uh, uh, LAN and range extenders. So for example, say, say your, your router, I don't know, let's, let's, pick, let's just say, um, let's say, let's put a pen here. Say the router is here, yeah? Now you're, you're down here, you, you're, not getting, you're not getting the wireless from here to here. So what you can do, you can install one of these devices in the in the uh, plug or electricity socket and this is going to go it's going to extend your your uh, uh, local area network through the electricity around your network it's a great thing yeah in the using using the copper the electricity couple around your your house to extend your your LAN. great the physical layer remember the uh, packet from the source to destination we are as as the stream is going down through the uh, each layer is called encapsulation as the, as the packet is coming back it's called de-encapsulation now at the transport layer you can see that, that that data application data has been segmented into small pieces put the header then the packet then the frame and then actually the bits so zero and then ones which is the physical layer that deals with with that moving the moving those bits encapsulation is a function of data link layer uh, data link layer uh, different media types require different data link layer encapsulation. The OSI protocol layer provides a means of the transport of the bits that make up the data link layer frame across the media. Now, the data link layer is going to choose, okay, uh, do I have the copper? So I'm going to have to encapsulate this, or I get ready for the bits and zeros to transmit or to move them in a different way than if I was using the wireless. So the data link layer is, good, is doing all this thinking. The physical layer, you can think of an intelligent layer, yeah? It's just like, okay, I'll just move those bits and zeros and ones. So we have a three different types of physical la layer media. We have electrical signals, which are, is copper. We have a fiber optic, 
fiber optic cable, which is the light bulbs. We are transmitting uh, through the light pulses. And then we have the waves, microwave signals, which is our wireless. Physical layer standards. Here, the top uh, six layers from layer six, seven, six, five, four, three, two, is the TCP IP standard are implemented in software and governed by IETF. Now, layer one, which is physical layer and half of data link layer, is that the physical layer standards are implemented in a hardware and are governed by many organizations, including ISOs, EIA, TIA, ITU, ANSI, IEEE, and so on. Functions, encoding, encoding or line encoding is a method of converting a stream of data into predefined code. Encoding is used to distinguish data bits from control bits and identify where the frame starts and ends. Signaling, signaling the signals asynchronously means that they are transmitted without a clock signal. Bandwidth, different physical media supports the transfer of bits at a different speeds. The data transfer is usually discussed in terms of bandwidth and throughput. Bandwidth is the capacity of medium to carry data. Bandwidth is typically measured in kilobits per second or megabits per second. So it's bits, yeah, no bytes. So if you see a small b that says a bit, zero or one. If you see a capital B, then that's talking about bytes, eight zeros or ones. So bits per second is fundamental unit of bandwidth kilobits per second is 1000 bits per second megabits per second is 1 million megabit, uh, bits per second and gigabits per second is 1 billion gigabits per second bits per second and terabits per second is 1 trillion bits per second throughput throughput is the measure of transfer of bits across the media over a given period of time Latency refers to the amount of time to include delays for data to travel from one given point to another. So throughput is like, okay, well, we have to measure for five minutes how much bits we are sending from the source to destination. So measure of the transfer of bits across the media over a given period of time. Latency it does refer to the amount of time, including the delays, which router delay, for example, switch delays it takes for the data to travel on a given point to another. The third measurement to measure is the transfer of usable data. And this is known as a good bit. Now, it's like what I was telling you earlier or in one of the previous chapters. Uh, if, if you have some valuable to send it to your friend, that, that, that is actually the good put. But you can't just send that as it is. So for example, imagine an uh, expensive watch. You can't just send it as it is in the post because it will break. So you need to bubble wrap it maybe, you need to put it in the box and so on. That is required. And that is information that we don't really want. You know, it's, 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 it's like extra stuff for our bandwidth. We do want to send it good put, but we have to identify source and destination. Uh, for example, making sure that the uh, for acknowledgement that we have guaranteed delivery and so on. Good put is a measure of usable data transferred over a given period of time, throughput, minus the traffic overhead for establishing session acknowledgement and encapsulation. There's an end missing there. So yeah, the good put is usable data that's actually going minus the traffic overhead. Everything, all the stuff that we have to add on it, the header and so on, this is just traffic overhead. Types of physical media. For example, if you look at the back of the routers, here is 1941 router. Uh, what we see here, USB type A connectors here on the, on the back of it. This router will have um, two gigabit ethernet interfaces, has got some management ports, auxiliary port, console port. So for example, if you buy a brand new router, we need to connect to this port to start connect, configuring, giving an IP address and so on. And then we can start using the router on the now network. This router does support DSL or synchronous HDSL, which is good. This is like a modular router, so you can just add and remove modules as you wish. And this router is actually uh, a switch as well, because you got a module here that's got a switching, fast Ethernet switch ports. Because it's a modular router, it's they are good. They're a bit more expensive than fixed mo routers. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully to see you in the section 4.2, Network Media. Bye-bye.